Welcome! In this video, we're going to review the central dogma of molecular biology. There are six learning goals. One, define the central dogma, list its steps. Two, illustrate how messenger RNA is produced and know its function. Three, contrast the function of messenger RNA with transfer RNA. Four, explain the function of the ribosome in translation. Five, Use the genetic code to identify an amino acid. And six, use the genetic code to explain what is meant by redundancy. The first question that we might ask is what is the central dogma? The central dogma is a description of the process by which genetic information in your DNA is converted into protein. This process involves several steps. We start with DNA, we then go to RNA, and finally we end up at protein. The processes by which these changes occur are known as transcription from DNA to RNA and translation from RNA to protein. The first step in this process is to go from DNA to RNA through the process of transcription. A reasonable question is what is RNA? RNA is a single-stranded molecule that is used to convey the genetic information for the construction of polypeptides which eventually fold into proteins. It's easiest to understand what RNA is by first comparing it to DNA. We know that DNA is a double-stranded molecule that has four nucleotide bases, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thiamine. A single DNA molecule has two strands. These are oftentimes referred to as anti-parallel because they run in opposite directions. Furthermore, the bases exhibit a characteristic called complementarity, such that adenine always binds with thiamine and cytosine always binds with guanine. If we compare the structure of DNA to a molecule of RNA, the first thing we notice is that RNA is single-stranded. The nucleotide bases of DNA are still largely intact with one exception. We still have cytosine, we still have guanine, and we still have adenine, but thiamine has been replaced by uracil. Similarly, the complementarity that we discussed in DNA has been somewhat altered in RNA. We still have cytosine binding with guanine, but now adenine is going to bind with uracil. Those binding properties will become more important when we discuss translation. To review, two differences stand out when we compare DNA to RNA. The first is that RNA is a single-stranded molecule, and the second is that the DNA nucleotide base thiamine has been replaced with uracil. There are two forms of RNA. The first is messenger RNA, oftentimes abbreviated mRNA. Messenger RNA is the kind of RNA that's going to carry the genetic message out of the nucleus, if you are a eukaryote, to the ribosome for translation. In order to build messenger RNA, we start with the DNA template strand and then a special enzyme called RNA polymerase binds and we start producing an RNA strand. It's important to note that the developing RNA strand picks up free nucleotides and assembles them into a growing RNA chain in the opposite direction of the template DNA strand. The RNA strand that is produced has a combination of introns and exons. Exons are the regions that actually will code for protein, and the introns need to be cleaved out. A special organelle called the spliceosome folds the RNA strand such that the introns are removed and we only end up with coding exons. This mature messenger RNA then makes its way to the ribosome. This mature messenger RNA then needs to make its way to the ribosome for translation. 
If you are a eukaryote, the messenger RNA leaves the nucleus through one of the nuclear pores and enters the cytosol. If you are a prokaryote, the messenger RNA moves directly to the ribosome. In contrast to messenger RNA, transfer RNA, or tRNA, transfers amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain in the ribosome. Transfer RNA has a unique cloverleaf structure illustrated here with two important parts. The first is the amino acid that is attached to the transfer RNA. And the second is the anticodon, which is presented here. This anticodon will match the messenger RNA strand and deliver a specific amino acid. The ribosome is a complex organelle that we will discuss next, but its job is to read the messenger RNA and assemble a growing polypeptide chain. It does this by receiving the amino acids from the tRNA through three different sites in the ribosome. Ribosomes are organelles that read messenger RNA and allow the transfer RNA to deliver amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. In this figure, we see our tRNA with our two parts, the anticodon at the base and the amino acid at the top. The tRNA enters the ribosome through the A site and its anticodon is matched to the codon in the messenger RNA strand. Once this occurs, the amino acid is transferred to the growing polypeptide chain, the transfer RNA makes its way to the E site, and then is released. The process by which the ribosome reads the transfer RNAs by matching them to the appropriate codon and adding amino acids to a growing polypeptide chain is known as translation. Each amino acid is encoded by a specific three-letter nucleotide triplet called a codon. Codons are matched to a specific anticodon as part of the tRNA. Each codon in messenger RNA specifies an amino acid. There are 20 amino acids encoded by the various codon combinations. These combinations of codons are known as the genetic code. In addition to specifying amino acids as part of the growing polypeptide chain, there are codons that start the process of translation and stop the process of translation. The genetic code is also often referred to as redundant because multiple codons code for the same amino acid. If we focus on two amino acids, serine and proline, you should notice there are three positions, one, two, and three. Within serine, the first and second positions do not change. However, the third position is free to vary without a corresponding change in amino acid. The pattern repeats itself for proline. The first and second positions do not change, but the third position changes without a corresponding change in amino acid. However, if a first position changes, you end up with a different amino acid. Serine is encoded by the triplet UCU, but proline is encoded by the triplet CCU. This pattern is best expressed by realizing that the third position is more free to change than the first or second positions.